This is the wonderful University of Manchester Museum, filled with incredible artefacts from across the world. The museum has collected fossils since the early 19th century and has amassed an important collection. This model might look a little bit like a dolphin or a shark, but it's neither. It's not a swimming dinosaur, but a type of extinct seagoing reptile called an ichthyosaur. We're going to take a bit of a journey through time, from when an ichthyosaur was alive, when it was found as a fossil, to eventually becoming part of this museum's collection. Millions of years ago, weird and wonderful creatures swam in a Jurassic Ocean that occupied this very spot. Here at the public beach at Whitby, their remains can still be discovered. Ichthyosaurs had two sets of fins, two forefins and two hindfins. Over 100 different species have been found across the world, and Whitby and the surrounding areas are renowned for the discovery of ichthyosaurs. A great number of ichthyosaur specimens have been found with their last meal preserved. It appears ichthyosaurs preferred a diet of squid and fish, although one rare specimen was found with the remains of a bird and a turtle inside. In 99% of the cases, it's near impossible to know exactly how an ichthyosaur died because the exact moment is not preserved. But some specimens show bite marks that may have killed the ichthyosaur. More likely, for our ichthyosaur, it probably died of old age. Over millions of years, the ichthyosaur became a fossil where eventually it was found on this very beach. Got my wellies on already. All I need is my jacket. Looks like it's gonna be a bit of a, bit of a cold one today. It's amazing, I mean, this is one fossil site from thousands around the world. You know, people have been collecting fossils, finding fossils thousands of years. You can hear the cars going by. I mean, everybody seems to think fossils are found in faraway lands. They're not. They're found everywhere. And there's cars going by. People have no idea that this fossil site is here. You know, filled with wonderful, wonderful specimens. Right, go on my bag. All the tools of the trade in there. Last thing. Hammer. Needed. Drop that in. Lock up, let's go see what we can find. I think it's about time i show you some of these fossils I brought along with me. This is one which I found a couple of years ago, which is carefully wrapped up. Now, it looks like any old rock, apart from I've cracked it open with a hammer, and inside is this beautiful ammonite. This is an extinct type of squid a cephalopod mollusk. It's related to things like cuttlefish, an octopus. Pop that down. And this is another one. Again, very carefully wrapped up. But this is from something quite different. This is a genuine tailbone from a dinosaur. Something like an iguanodon or a mantellisaurus. You see all the structures of the bone here, sort of honeycomb structure. Very nice. I'll pop that on a bit of bubble wrap. Now, from this site, I found 
earlier today, this piece, which I've already wrapped up, and I'll pop it out. Beautiful fossil leaf. It's got very, very nice details. And aside from that, I've already collected a couple of other, these sort of rounded rocks we call nodules, which hopefully they'll have some fossils inside. So we've got one, two, three. So safety first. Goggles. Pop them on. Sama, let's give it a go. Fingers crossed. <sighs> Nothing. Oh, that's one down. Try this one. See, some of these are very, very tough. And, you know, these are over 300 million years old. Nope. Well, you win some, you lose some. Lots of fossils are placed on public display museums so that everybody can enjoy them. But because there are so many fossils, not every single specimen can be displayed. So the majority of the collections are held behind the scenes in the private collections of the museum. But I've been given special access to go behind the scenes and see what I can find. Let's go take a look. This is a paleontologist's paradise. In each and every one of these drawers, of the museum's fossil collection. Now I know for a fact that the ichthyosaur fossils, the smaller ichthyosaur fossils, are stored in each of these drawers. Now I think I'm just going to start at random. Let's have a look in here. Uh, lots and lots of ichthyosaur vertebrae, the backbones, tailbones. Uh, nothing much in there. We'll look at this one. More vertebrae again. Various different sizes. This one. More vertebrae. Vertebrae, of course, are really important. They're also the most commonly found ichthyosaur fossils. Let's skip a few. Uh, how about this one? Ah, now this is not an ichthyosaur vertebrae. This is a beautiful piece of ichthyosaur jaw. Wow. The teeth are exceptionally well preserved. They even have the fine striations preserved. This probably belongs to something like a, like a Temnodontosaurus, a giant ichthyosaur about 8 or 10 metres in length, about the size of a bus. Very nice. Let me carefully put that back. Okay, where to next? Just dodge a little guardian dinosaur to look at this. This is one of the most complete ichthyosaur skeletons in the museum's collection. The tail extends all the way to here at the back and follow it along. You've got the hind fin, the pelvis, the pelvic bones, lots and lots of ribs, even some belly ribs called gastralia. And then here at the front you have a very well preserved forefin, in fact both forefins, and then that is very nice. Beautiful skull with an almost complete sclerotic ring, the bone inside the eye. Very nice. Museums play a vital role in helping to preserve the past for future generations to enjoy. <laughs>